Hi everybody, it's Professor Mitchell. In this video, we're gonna be looking at areas of surfaces of revolution. All right, so I'm going to skip most of the derivation for this formula. So uh, here you see this blue curve. So uh, what we're gonna be talking about in this section is revolving this blue curve about say the, well, in this case, it would be the x-axis. Um, and that would form this uh, surface that you see here in brown. Uh, and uh, so we're going to be calculating the area of that surface. The surface generated by revolving the graph of a non-negative function, y equals f of x for x from a to b, about the x-axis. The surface is a union of bands like the one swept out by the arc from P to Q. So if I was going to do the derivation, I would uh, show you the, um, first I would get a formula for the surface area of this band, and then I would add them all up and make that into a Riemann sum, which would uh, turn into an integral. So we will skip those details in this section, and I'll just give you the formula. So if the function f of x greater than or equal to zero is continuously differentiable on the closed interval from a to b, then the area of the surface generated by revolving the graph of y equals f of x about the y-axis <clears throat> is given by this formula. Uh, and again, there are two different ways to write it. So you can either write it the integral from a to b of two pi y times the square root of one plus dy dx squared with respect to x. So that would be Leibniz notation or the integral from a to b of two pi times f of x times the square root of one plus f prime of x squared with respect to x. So that would be Newton's notation. All right, so in this first example, we will calculate the area of this surface. The curve is y equals two times the square root of x from the point where x equals one to the point where x equals two. All right, so evaluating this formula, We have a equals one, b equals two, y equals two times the square root of x. And hopefully you can easily verify that the derivative of that is one over the square root of x. We don't have any problems with continuity in this problem because we are not trying to start at x equals zero. We're starting at x equals one. So over this entire interval, that derivative is continuous. So we can use this formula. All right, now uh, in this example, we are going to have to perform a little algebraic manipulation on the radical to transform it into an expression that is easier to integrate. And I'll walk you through that step by step. All right, so substituting the derivative for dy dx, we have the square root of one plus the square of one over the square root of x, which of course is just the square root of one plus one over x. Uh, we're going to rewrite that, getting a common denominator and adding these two together. You get that uh, the radicand becomes x plus 1 over x, which is the same thing as the square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x. And so because there is this f of x over here, that actually comes in very handy because now this square root of x will cancel this square root of x. And we'll just leave four pi times the integral from one to two of the square root of x plus one with respect to x. And that integral is very easy to evaluate uh, by, I guess it's technically a baby u substitution. <clears throat> the integral of the square root of x plus one is two thirds x plus one to the three halves plugging in two and then subtracting the value at one, you get that the area of this surface is eight pi over three times three root three minus two root two. All right, and then for revolution about the y-axis, if x equals g of y, 
is non-negative and is continuously differentiable on the interval from C to D, then the area of the surface generated by revolving the graph of y, x equals g of y about the y-axis is like this. So we're just substituting instead of functions of x, you have functions of y here. Okay, so as an example, let's look at the line segment x plus y equals one from the point zero one to the point one zero revolved about the y-axis. So that gives you a right circular cone. And what's nice about this example is uh, that at one time, you may not <laughs> have this formula memorized, but there is a formula for the surface area of a cone. So we can use that to check our answer. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take the equation x plus y equals one and solve it for x. So that gives us x equals one minus y for y between zero and one. We're gonna revolve that about the y-axis. Uh, notice that when we're calculating the surface area, that excludes the base area, all right? So you might be thinking, you know, picturing a cone, if the cone, you know, had a, a cap on the bottom that you would include the area of that cap. Uh, we're not going to do that in this case because that is not part of the surface. Okay, so the uh, geometry formula for this, the lateral surface area, so that's just the sides of the cone, is the base circumference divided by two multiplied by the slant height. And that comes out to pi times the square root of two. So hopefully when we find this area using calculus, it will come out to that same value. All right, so with C equal to zero and D equal to one, X equals one minus Y. Of course, dx dy is equal to negative one. The derivative of one minus y is just negative one. Uh, we get that the square root of one plus dx dy squared just comes out to the square root of two. All right, so then we have the integral from c to d of two pi times x, which remember is one minus y, times this thing, which came out to the square root of two. So that's how you get this integral. We're gonna take uh, the two pi and the square root of two and pull those out of the integral because that's just a constant multiple. And then by the backwards power rule, the integral of one minus y is y minus y squared over two. So plugging in one and then plugging in zero, you get uh, two pi times the square root of two times one minus one half. Of course, one minus one half is just one half, and that's gonna cancel this two. And it does indeed come out to pi times the square root of two. So it agrees with the geometry formula. And believe it or not, that's all I have for this section. So we'll see you next time.